Good morning. I want to thank the Secretary General for organizing this summit and all the leaders who are participating. That so many of us are here today is a recognition that the threat from climate change is serious, it is urgent, and it is growing. I wouldn't let them go outside right now. 3,000 red-winged blackbirds, dead on the ground. 100 miles down the road outside of Ozark, 100,000 dead drumfish washed up on a riverbank. A coincidence? And thousands more feathered dead in Texas, Kentucky, Louisiana. In the Chesapeake Bay, 2 million more dead fish. In Florida, a bunch more fish no longer flapping. Dead snappers in New Zealand, 50 jackdaws in Sweden, deceased 40,000 crabs, cold and lifeless on an English beach. In Brazil, 100 tons of fish, belly up. And today, 8,000 departed doves in Italy, blue stains in their little mouths. No nation, however large or small, wealthy or poor, can escape the impact of climate change. Rising sea levels threaten every coastline. More powerful storms and floods threaten every continent. More frequent droughts and crop failures breed hunger and conflict in places where hunger and conflict already thrive. The people of Somalia are no strangers to adversity. In the past 20 years, they've suffered the effects of civil war and successive droughts that have forced millions out of their homes. But now, a deadly combination of the dry spell, violent conflict, high food prices, and lack of meaningful help is pushing them to the very brink. Some of the camps, the weakest among the displaced, are dying. In just five days, 11 children in one such camp have died. This man showed me their graves at Gabigdam, buried here because their parents didn't have a land of their own. On shrinking islands, families are already being forced to flee their homes as climate refugees. The security and stability of each nation and all people, our prosperity, our health, and our safety are in jeopardy. And the time we have to reverse this tide is running out. And yet, we can reverse it. John F. Kennedy once observed that our problems are man-made, therefore they may be solved by man. The international community keeps on sending to our country more soldiers and weapons, but little in themselves. The world should send us meaningful help instead of arms that lengthen the conflict and our suffering. John F. Kennedy once observed that our problems are man-made, therefore they may be solved by man.
Este explota, viste ese humo, mira, 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 me ayuda, corre, se cayó. ¡Oh, my God, no! ¡No! ¡Oh, my God, no! ¡Oh, no! ¡No! ¡No! John F. Kennedy once observed that our problems are man-made, therefore they may be solved by man. among the swaying buildings, a bright glow in the night sky, possibly what scientists call an earthquake light. Look at that, man. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. What the heck is that? What is that? Look at they join. Oh. Look at those things. And the phones are the triangle. And, and it just falls to the triangle like that though?
security, freedom, and the rule of law. The United Nations exists to fulfill its founding ideals of preserving peace and security, promoting global cooperation, and advancing human rights. The world needs the Security Council to uphold its responsibility for maintaining international peace and security fully, fairly, without delay. It's so important. It's important to ensure your vibrant cultural heritage, to make sure it continues to thrive and inspire and build a bridge that reaches over all faiths and creeds in the ocean. By being here tonight, you are contributing to lasting peace and security at home and abroad. Benedict XVI ended his visit to the Holy Land with a strong appeal for peace during the departure ceremony at Ben Gurion International Airport in Tel Aviv. Let there be lasting peace based on justice. Let there be genuine reconciliation and healing. Let it be universally recognized that the state of Israel has the right to exist and to enjoy peace and security within internationally agreed borders. Is this within the confines of the Constitution or does it go beyond it? I think that the last phrase in there is a very, very sweeping phraseology because it's not only international peace and security in Iraq, it's the region. Thousands of lives were suddenly ended by evil, despicable acts of terror. The pictures of airplanes flying into buildings Fires burning, huge, huge structures collapsing, have filled us with disbelief, terrible sadness, and a quiet, unyielding anger. America and our friends and allies join with all those who want peace and security in the world. But she noted that many important things have not changed, including the aims and values which inspired the United Nations Charter. To promote international peace, security and justice, to relieve and remove the blight of hunger, poverty and disease, and to protect the rights and liberties of every citizen.